Hey, if you're happy to be in the house of God, put your hands together for Jesus today. Come on, no better place to be than in the house of God all together. I just, I love each and every one of you. And today we have an exciting time together. I just love bringing God's word to each and every one of you. But I, I want to give you a little heads up because the next three weeks, we have a very special series that's about to take place. And these next three weeks, um, starting next week, it's going to be a relationship series. So Pastor Destiny and Philip are going to start this thing out, and it's really going to be on marriages, relationships, if you're single, if you're old, if you're young, no matter what area of life you're in, it's for you. So make sure these next three weeks that you are here for this relationship series. How many of y'all ready for God's word in this place? Come on. Hey, I want you to turn with me. I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 7. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 7. This will be our text today. This is what the Bible says. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. And this is our focus today, this next verse. I want you to get a little pumped up about it. I have fought the good fight. Come on, somebody. I have finished the race. Come on. I have kept the faith. The title of my message today is, What Do You Do When You Hit the Wall? What do you do when you hit the wall? Bow your heads with me. God, we love you. We praise your name. Thank you for Shreveport Community Church, Lord. Thank you for every person in this place. Allow your word to wash over us and change us today. And everybody said, hey, give someone a high five and you could be seated. You know, I missed you guys last week. I was in Miami, but... Was Pastor Destiny's sermon just unbelievable? Can we put our hands together for Pastor Destiny? It was just incredible. You know, a few months ago, um, I was on the phone with my brother, Dez, and we were just talking, and Dez told me, he was like, hey, in January, I'm going to go to Miami, and I'm going to uh, run a marathon. And I said, why on earth would you ever do that? I said, that sounds absolutely miserable. He said, well, Rich is running, and a lot of people from VU, and get this, my brother Dez, he didn't even invite me. He didn't ask me to be a part of this. I volunteered. I volunteered for the misery, for the pain, and the hurt of running a marathon. Last Sunday, I ran my first marathon, and the idea... I'm going to tell everyone about it, too. I don't know if you heard I ran a marathon. The idea for the modern marathon, it was inspired by the legend of an ancient Greek messenger. And this guy raced from the side of Marathon to Athens, a distance of about 25, 26 miles. So what happens is this messenger is on the battlefield, and the Greeks defeat the Persians, but he's got to get the message back. So he runs as hard as he can for 26 miles, gives the message, and then drops dead. And let me tell you, a lot of people don't believe this story. I absolutely believe this story, especially the drop dead part. I'm telling you, it's insane. The Apostle Paul, of course, being a classical Greek scholar, he was a student of the philosopher Gamaliel, and he must have known this story, this marathon story. And I believe the Apostle Paul knew something personally as well as historically about running a marathon. Because friends, after my experience, I've never seen a more accurate description of this race. Once again, the words of the Apostle Paul. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Last Sunday, 
I was tempted to stop the fight. I was tempted to quit the course, and I was tempted to lose the faith. And I, I can tell you exactly where it happened in my run. I'll tell you exactly where it happened. You know, in preparation for this run, there was a few times that I ran like 20 miles getting ready for this run. I'd call my running coach, uh, Willis Somerville, who's just an incredible runner. I'd say, hey, man, I ran 20 miles. And he'd say, that's great, Diddy. But um, get ready for the marathon. He said, because there's gonna be something that hits you in the marathon like you've never felt in your life. I was like, whatever, man. Like, I ran 20 miles. I'm gonna be fine. Let me tell you, after running that race last Sunday, I know exactly what he's saying. And in the runner's community, they call it the wall. Everyone say the wall. And when you hit the wall, I'm telling you, you don't know what to do. I'm just, I woke up at 4.30 last Sunday for a 6 a.m. race. And so it's downtown Miami, and it's all these like, you know, skyscrapers and downtown. And there's 20,000 people that ran this race. So it's still dark, like when we got up, and we're walking out there, and thousands of people coming from God knows where. It was eerie. It was like the walking dead, like everyone meeting at one spot. And then they put us in this like corral. We're, we're in there like sardines, just like cattle waiting to be released for the race. And then off we go. And guys, it was glorious. I want to tell you the ocean running by the big skyscrapers. We had planned out our little outfits. You know, we had our Saccone shoes on and Des and I are like singing. This is so easy. This is great until mile 22. And I'm convinced there was a demon hanging out like right around mile 22. Because mile 22, my legs stopped working. My arms stopped working. Guys, my brain stopped working. I started to have like demonic thoughts like, Denny, you're about to die. You're going to drop dead. You're going to hit your head on the pavement. Who's going to raise your kids? Like, what's going to happen? Why did you volunteer for this? You got to quit. This is stupid. And I want to tell you this. You don't just hit the wall in marathons, but every one of us, we hit the wall in life. You know, you're running along. Everything's great. You think you're in control. And then you hit the wall in your marriage. You hit the wall in your relationship with Almighty God. You hit your wall in the goals and dreams, your aspirations. What do you do when you hit the wall? We gotta look at the words of the Apostle Paul. He said, I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I only got two points for you this morning. Here's my first point. We fight to the finish. We fight to the finish. You know, when I hit that wall, I'm telling you, I could care less how fast I was running. I didn't care about my pace. I didn't care about my little outfit anymore. All I could care about was putting one foot in front of the other and fighting to the finish. The good news we all have when all of us hit the wall is that 2,000 years ago, a savior, come on somebody, he came to show us how to fight to the finish. The apostle Paul, he writes this, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, you've heard it, and you might think it just means, you know, uh, Daddy God, but it, it means far more than that. This Aramaic word, what it actually means is this, Father, I will obey you. It's an aggressive title that in this context says, Father, even when I hit the wall, I will fight through to obedience. Father, when suddenly nothing makes sense, I will not run away from you, but God, I will run straight to you. The only time we have record in the Bible of Jesus using this word, Abba, Father, is when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus cries out, Abba, Father, I will obey you. And what a fight it was gonna be to obey. You know, Jesus... He hit a wall at Gethsemane. Jesus wanted to quit at Gethsemane in indescribable anguish, get this, that caused him to literally sweat blood. Jesus prayed this. He said, Father, if it be possible, 
Don't make me drink this cup of the sins of the world. Choose somebody else. Let it pass me by. But Jesus kept fighting. He fought for you and me and he cried and he prayed. He said, God, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus hit a wall as he hung on the cross on Calvary. Physical, emotional, spiritual agony. And he pleaded with God, God, why have you forsaken me? But friends, Jesus fought. Come on, somebody. And he fought and he fought and he cried out and he said, it is finished. Jesus fought to the end for you and for me. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. He's the ultimate example. The early Christians, the early Christians hit a wall when they were beaten and told to never speak the name of Christ. The early Christians hit a wall when their leaders were killed and they were forced underground, but they kept their faith and they kept the word of their testimony. Friends, they hit a massive wall. All of us will hit walls and this was their testimony. This has gotta be what we decree. Romans 8.31, it says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 36, as it is written, for your sake we face death all the day long. We are considered as sheep to the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, present nor the future, any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, they fought to the finish because they understood their salvation, their righteousness, their victory had already been won by Christ, the blood of Jesus. And let me tell you this, the word of their testimony. What do you do? When you hit a wall, you fight and then you fight again and you keep fighting to the finish because we understand greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We understand that the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. We fight to the finish. Put your hands together for Jesus today. Come on, somebody. You want to fight? Exactly how do we fight? Like, how do we fight? Sorry about it, but the wall is real and the pain is real, the isolation, the darkness, the futility. And again, there's three powerful phrases from Paul. He says, I've fought a good fight. I've finished the course. I've kept my faith. The fact is, when we hit the wall in any areas of our lives, 1 John 5, 4, it says this, amplified version. For everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing persistent faith. Everyone say faith. Faith in Jesus, the Son of God. So here's my second and final point. We fight and we finish in faith. We fight and we finish in faith. Hebrews chapter 11, it's called the Hall of Fame of Faith. And there's really an impressive gathering of A-list Bible characters in this chapter. If you have a favorite Bible hero in the Old Testament, odds are they're probably in this chapter. And they're in this chapter because they have great faith. How do you have great faith? Well, Hebrews 11, 1 tells us. It says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now, if that's unclear, let me, let me paraphrase for you. Faith, it's when you're hoping for something, right? You're hoping for an outcome, but then your I hope so turns into an I know so before it's even visibly evident. That's faith. You know, when you were five years old, you had that older brother or sister, and they convinced you there is a monster in the closet, right? You believed beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's a monster, and then you're 15 years old, you still can't open that door. You're still terrified. I saw this quote the other day, and it said this. It said, don't criticize your kids for believing in Santa Claus. There's still adults who believe in the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> That's me. That's me. You know, it is. You don't have a faith story. Listen to me. You don't have a faith story 
unless you have a wall story. Okay, the victors of their faith, they all hit a wall and they fought through the wall in their faith. Because listen to me, if you can do it on your own, if you can fix it on your own, if you can pay for it, if you can solve it, you don't need faith. But if it's humanly impossible, okay, if the diagnosis is incurable, if every door is shut, every window is closed, everyone has left your side, you have hit a wall, then friends, it's time to fight to the finish in faith. You've got to fight. You know, Evangel Christian Academy is one of the biggest miracles in my life and my family's life. And I just absolutely love what Evangel stands for and what's happening at Evangel. Today is actually um, an open house at Evangel. And I just, I encourage you, if you're thinking about bringing your kids to Evangel, what a better place to be where your teachers and coaches are gonna teach the principles of Almighty God. And that is what matters first. So make sure that you understand this is open house today. And it's uh, at the elementary, at the high school, 3.30 at the high school, 2 o'clock. If you have a friend, tell them about it. If you're thinking about it, be there. But honestly, evangel shouldn't even exist, guys, at least on paper. Evangel shouldn't even be there because whenever we purchased the school proper and it began, the Holy Spirit impressed upon my dad's heart that this school would be a faith school, meaning Everything we have would be supplied by Almighty God. So four years into Evangel, hit a massive wall. And we owed over half a million dollars. And there was no one to call and no way to pay it. So we turned to our faith. We began to pray. The coaches, the teachers, the students, the pastors. And, and after some time, a lawyer called my dad. And the lawyer said... Um, there's a woman that passed away and she's left some money in her will to Evangel. And they said, hey, let's go to lunch. So they went to lunch. My grandmother who founded the school and dad and a few other people. So they sit down at lunch and the lawyer says, you want to do this thing before or after lunch? And if you want to do it before, it's not, it's not going to be much money. So they said, let's, let's do this thing before. So the lawyer reaches in and gets a check and says, this check is so your special needs program can continue functioning and put a check on the table for a million dollars. Dad always says that that place got real spiritual right then. It came like a big praise and word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's another check. What? There's another check. He pulls out another check and puts it on the table and says, this is so you can get out of debt. $5 million. Put your hands together for Jesus today. It's part of our legacy. But can I tell you this? That if you go watch God Family Football, our docuseries on Amazon Prime that watches, that follows dad and the football team, you'll see that today it's still a fight of faith every single day. That little school has to depend on Almighty God. And it's no different for anyone in this place. It's not one-stop shopping. No, every single day, friends, we got to fight. And you fight to the finish, and we fight in faith. One more time, put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, one more time. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not faith in faith that we have. Okay, I understand that. And it's not faith in miracles. It's not faith in success. No, the Bible says it's faith by hearing the word of God. How many people out here love the word of God? How many believe what the word of God says? Because faith, faith is I can't, but father, you can. That's what God's word says. Faith is I am well, because that's what God's word says. Faith is I am free. I have favor because that's what God's word says. Faith is, listen to me. I got power by the finished blood of Jesus Christ and I am victorious. That's what God's word says about you. What do you do when you hit a wall? You fight to the finish in your faith. You know, me and my brothers and sisters, we, uh, we had two incredible grandfathers that were both just incredible men of God. And the worship team can come up here. I'm closing. 
My mom's dad had a fatal stroke while he was preaching on a Sunday morning and went to be with the Lord when my mom was just three years old. And in that little town, it was a small town, he had made such a difference that get this, over a thousand people came to his funeral. He finished well and he fought through in, in great faith. My dad's dad, Paul Paul Rodney, Pastor Rodney, the legend here, I mean, all of us, all of us grandkids, we adored him. He was our delight. You know, I can remember playing catch with my Paul Paul Rodney. He could spin a football, and I remember eating his gumbo and hearing him speak his Cajun French. And I just, I loved being in his presence. I don't know if y'all have a person like this, but we didn't have to really be talking, have to be doing much, but just sitting in his presence. I felt so covered. I felt so loved, and I felt like he was the one that was gonna take care of everything. Whenever Papa Rodney, whenever he went to be with the Lord, I can remember all three major TV networks here in town, they covered his funeral. I remember standing right there and for five hours during his wake, we stood there and heard testimony after testimony of how he was the city's pastor, how he pastored not just SC Church, but the entire city. And I'll never forget one of the anchors, what they said. They said, today a legend has died, a man that loved God and loved people. You know, I stand here today and stand here in this amazing atmosphere in this church with my family, all my brothers and sisters, and we, we know that it might not have been like this. It, it could have happened a different way. Am I gonna get some spiritual music here? Like, <laughs> come on, Kansas City Chiefs, let's go. I'm still bitter, I'm bitter. Don't work on your 40 time. You start running with me, man. But I can remember, all of us know that it almost didn't end up this way. Because there was a time early in Paul Paul Rodney's pastoring here where he hit a major wall, where he wanted to quit, where the church wasn't growing, the people weren't happy, he wasn't happy, and he said, God, I'm gonna do something different. He came to the church by himself one night, and he said, God, I'm finished. I'm gonna do something different. I'll go back to being an evangelist. And in that moment, God spoke to Pastor Rodney and said this, don't leave, stay. Someone needs to hear this right now. Don't quit, but persevere. Don't doubt, but believe. If you just keep fighting in faith, your promise is the best is yet to come. It was his Abba Father moment. Father, I will obey you. I will fight to obey you. And it didn't just affect him, but it affected the legacy and the longevity of our entire family and this place you're in today. Let me tell you this. Whenever you fight to the finish and you do something great, it's not just for you, but you're impacting generation after generation. When you fight through and you have victory and you finish, it's for those friends, those coworkers, those people, they're watching you fight. They're watching you go through those things. And when you have great faith, you impact those that are around you because what you do for God, it never dies. It lives on for all of eternity. What dad calls immortal moments. We fight in faith to the finish. Stand with me right now. I just have one question for us and I'm gonna pray. And then we're gonna to sing together. Remember this, in life, you are gonna hit the wall, I'm sorry. And you're gonna to wanna to quit and you're gonna make a wrong decision. You're gonna go through loss, heartbreak, disappointment. But guys, you've got to learn this vernacular. These have gotta be your Abba Father moments. God, I choose to obey you. You gotta say this, I'm gonna to continue to run through the pain. I'm gonna use my faith to fight to the finish. There's a finish line up there somewhere and I won't stop until I cross it. You might say, 
I need you to break it down a little more practical. Okay, I'll give you a practical handle right now. Fighting in faith, it means loving God well. That's what we say here. You gotta love God well. How do we love God well? Well, we keep showing up to love God well. You show up to the house of Almighty God. Whenever you hit the wall, whenever you're confused, whenever you don't know what your next step is, love God well and show up to the place that can transform you. You know, something that's happening today, it's, it's community groups. And we're not just a, a church that does community groups, we're a church of community groups. So when you hit that wall, You've got to run to the place. Community groups is where you have life. Community groups is men and women that have been through what you're going through and have had victory. Community groups is how you fight. You know, whenever I was running my race, and it was at the end, last four miles, I want to quit. And I look in front of me, and my brother Dez and Daniel Cujan are running in front of me. And um, golly, y'all are distracting me so bad. <laughs> And so they're running in front of me. And I look at Dez and I look at Daniel and I say, you know what? If they can make it through, I can make it through. If they can push, I can push. If they can finish, I can finish. So let me tell you what happens in community groups. You have men and women that have faced walls and they've been victorious. You have men and women that have had things that are monumental and God has done miracle after miracle for them. So how do we fight? We've got to get connected in the house of God. Don't run away from it, but Father God will fight to obey you. Bow your head with me right now. I want to pray for you and then we're going to worship. I just want to ask you a question. How many of you have hit a wall and you need faith right now? Just raise your hand right now. How many of you hit a wall in any area and you need faith right now? Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you for every hand that is lifted in this place. Jesus, thank you that you came and you're the ultimate example, God, of how to fight and to persevere, to go through the pain. And Jesus, you finished it once and for all. And because you finished it, God, you have given us power. God, you have given us power. And God, I pray for every hand that is lifted. Whatever the wall represents that they're facing in the name of Jesus, I pray that they won't quit, but they will persevere. I pray they won't stop, but they will continue. God, I pray that they won't doubt, but God, I pray great belief. Every hand that is lifted. God, I pray for those that are facing impossibilities in their body, that they're struggling. God, with their health, in the name of Jesus, by your stripes, they are healed in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every hand that's represented with relationships. Lord, we call the sons and the daughters and relationships and marriages, put them back together, the impossibilities. God, we pray that you will move on them. Lord, I pray for every hand, my friends that are facing financial difficulty. God, I pray that this week, you do something that shows them that you're watching them, that you're looking out for them. You'll do a miracle. And God, we're gonna give you the glory. So God, bless my friends today. Even in the moments where they don't know what to do, where they don't know where to go, God, you see them and give them the strength in the name of Jesus. Give them the strength to fight. God, give them the strength to fight. Give them the strength to have faith and help them to know that they're gonna finish strong. Right now, I want you to bow your head and lift your hands and let's fight and worship and declare that the best is yet to come for your life. Come on, let's worship.